Well then, Bunny, let's talk about books. You see, okay. people always people always say, "Hey, Steve, when you're not podcasting, what do you do in your free time?" To which I say, "Poet, philosopher, and professional masturbator." Mm-hmm. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> yeah, professional. My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> <clears throat> People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal but scattered employee at my local bookstore for over 17 years straight. Yeah. That's not like they, there haven't been any breaks or gaps or lulls. Now, 17 straight years. If my career was a person, an actual person, then it would pretty much sound like this. Ugh, whatever, Dad. <laughs> dad. Oh, oh my God, I hate you, Dad. Ugh. No, you can't follow me on Snapchat. <laughs> and as such, I really do have my skeletal brown fingers on the pulse of the book world, and I am here to rub my skeletal fingers all over your mouth with this week's unforgettably forgettable installment of Notes from the Bookstore. Dun, dun, dun. This week's episode of Notes from the Bookstore is brought to you by Hillary Clinton's new biography, Sorry Guys. <laughs> the 2016 election to a racist con man. Yeah, sorry guys. Yeah. Sorry about that. Now this racist con man is destroying the government from within. Oh, yeah, guys. Oh, I feel so bad about that. Sorry. (laughs) We're now facing a possible nuclear annihilation. Oh, gee, fellas. (sighs) Sorry, guys. Sorry, boot that. No, I've got some real big, big, big news in the bookstore front. Real big. Yeah. Game changing stuff. But before we get there, before we get there, I want to have a conversation about ultra famous millionaire writer John Grisham. Okay. John Grisham. Now, a, which one was he? Was he the lawyer guy? He was the lawyer guy. Uh, okay. The firm of You to a Kill. Pelican the Pelican Briefs. Yeah. yeah. So he's the author of of the 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 very popular book Young Enterprising Lawyer. And then he he followed that up with the book Evil Law Firm. And then he blew up the book world with his very original book The Young Enterprising Lawyer in the Evil Law Firm. That one was a crossover. Yeah. Like uh Frankenstein well, it's, meets it's a strange or, Yeah. Like Frankenstein meets the Wolfman or Gingerbread Man versus Evil Bong, <laughs> which, is, which is just the kind of uh, uh, wonderful, classy, top of the line movies that they have on Hulu. Uh huh. OK. Yeah. Yeah. We've got some good films there. So, yeah. Like, is, just is, imagine- but, but we, we got to find out if, if Gary Busey is still doing the Gingerbread Man. Oh, I imagine so. The gingerbread. I, I I didn't know that Gary Busey was doing the gingerbread man, but I did notice on the poster that uh, the gingerbread man looked very creepy and a bit toothy. So I'm assuming <laughs> that's, I'm assuming that's that's definitely a Busey in there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So just imagine gingerbread man versus evil bong, but with boring legal thrillers, and that's John Grisham. Interesting <laughs> fact. Interesting fact, John Grisham was once himself a lawyer, which might be why he can only write books about lawyers. Uh, so, yeah, uh, well, that's that's that whole write what you know crap. Yeah, yeah, which is why I'm writing a series of uh, mysteries about a uh, storyteller and podcaster with a thick member who solves crimes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, gonna, it's a very original series of books. Yeah, very excited about it. So John Grisham, the Stephen King of legal thrillers, 
in that John Grisham has written a million books. He's had his books turned into movies and TV shows. And like Stephen King, John Grisham maybe could have given up writing a long ass time ago. <laughs> his yeah. his new book, his new book, which just came out like a few weeks ago, is called The Rooster Bar. <laughs> the Rooster Bar is uh, currently the the odds on favorite to nab this year's award for worst book title. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Rooster Bar is actually about it. Doesn't matter because that title sucks. See now, I, I'm wondering though. I'm wondering, like, if you are John Grisham or you are Stephen King, um. Like, because they, they always used to say that Stephen King could wipe his ass on a piece of paper and it would sell. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering, like, if we were writers and, and once we decided, wow, you know, we really got a lot of money here, we're done. We're, we're done with money. Money's, we got it. And then we actually do start like wiping our asses and selling it. Yeah. You yeah. know, like 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 it would it would be one of those sad declines. Yeah. But I think there may be a, a, a case for coolness because it's intentional. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine so. You know, we we haven't lost it. We just don't fucking care anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We just don't give a crap. Yeah. So. And like on the last page, you write out the whole first one, whatever it is. Like John Grisham should should go and do a book that's all about chipmunks. You know? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. People would still buy that. People would definitely still buy that. Yeah. The people he, like he also, I, yeah, yeah. They he also has a series of kids books. Uh, Theodore Boone, kid, kid lawyer. Really? Yeah, and I'm always mentioning yeah. it at story time, and I'm like, hey, we got some great books for kids. Like, check this out, John Grisham. Uh, hey, kids, at story time. How many of you enjoy complex legal thrillers? Show of hands. <laughs> Show of hands. What? You kids don't enjoy complex legal thrillers? He used to be a lawyer. <laughs> so I'm always I'm always rubbing John Grisham in their faces. John Grisham John Grisham has, has had a he's had a long career full of ups and downs, like uh his being elected to the Mississippi House of Representatives. Where he, uh, where he was uh, a representative from 1983 to 1990, or really? or his or his for his foray into screenplay writing with the 2004 comedy Mickey, which I believe no one saw. I haven't even heard of it. Yeah. Or what about the time in 2014 where he came to the defense of kitty porn? Really? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I I found an old 2014 article from Forbes magazine, and they did an interview with John Grisham, and John Grisham came to the defense of men who watch child porn. What did he say? He said that there there are men who, you know, it's late, and they're on the internet, they're surfing the web. Yeah. And they're going to these random uh, websites, and this website takes you here, and that website takes you there. Next thing you know, they're accidentally watching some video, and they don't even know that one of the performers is a child. And it does. It, and he didn't mean to watch that, but still, that man is now rotting in jail, and that is wrong. We should look at the intent of the people who watch these videos and not just simply throw everyone who watches child porn into jail. 
Our jails are filled with men who haven't committed a crime and have never done anything bad to a child. But their one crime is that they watched one video on the Internet. And that is wrong. And I'm like, dude, you are coming to the defense of child pornography. <laughs> How how is how 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 did this not kill your career? This you know this is a strange legal turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, he's. He, I'm a. I I can only assume that he's working on a a child pornography themed legal thriller. I mean, I could see if you wanted to try to argue a, a censorship and freedom of speech issue yeah. over child pornography. You're disgusting and you're wrong, but I can see it. You yes. know? Yeah. Um, but yes, he's actually... He, he's not defending child porn. He is defending pedophiles. Yeah, he's defending men who watch child porn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So just an FYI, why didn't that ruin his fucking career? Yeah, but I, I've I noticed a few people on Twitter and on uh, Facebook and stuff sharing this article from 2014. Now that you know so much sexual harassment is is coming to light, that now people are like, oh, well, let me dust off this chestnut. Hey guys, guess <laughs> who really enjoys child porn? <laughs> Famous author John Grisham. So just an FYI out there, uh, legendary, famous, successful millionaire author John Grisham thinks it's unfair that men who watch child pornography go to jail. Yeah. Oh, That's Republican-level perversion. <laughs> Poor men who watch child porn. Thanks, yeah. John Grisham. So, I, I don't know. so let's let's talk about work now. Okay, because shit has gone down, sir. I, you have mentioned something like that before, big time. Yeah, bigly, bigly, some bigly stuff. Huge stuff has gone down. Now it's going to sound like I'm not talking about by, about my big news. My, it's going to sound like I'm not talking about work, but I am, dude. It's all connected. Okay. So, so Natasha wants to move. All right. But not for a while because the kids are in high school. Yeah. And, and Bella's in sixth grade. So, so Natasha wants to at least wait until the kids are done with high school and they'll be like 18. And they'll be done with high school and they'll be going to college. And that's when Natasha feels, okay, so like in two years, because they're sophomores now. So like in two years, that would, if we are going, if we are going to move, that would be the perfect time. So like in two years, we're going to move. And uh -huh. that's great because I, Natasha, hate Oklahoma and it's a piece of crap and I want to get out of here. Where are you planning on going? Uh... Everybody has a different thing that they want. Natasha wants to go to Portland because she has a lot of friends in, on Tumblr that live in Portland, and so like she she would move to Portland, and suddenly she has like ten BFFs, and they would spend all of their time together. And also, watching Portland Supernatural. Is yeah, watching Supernatural. Portland and, is pretty I awesome. I don't know, getting in, getting into adventures and shit. Uh, drinking heavily and so like good for her yeah but uh it, and also it's just a much more leftist <laughs> forward thinking place because oklahoma is just a backwards hell but i feel that like won't oregon like i get a bit of racism here yeah. but won't me and my like brown skin and my long hair won't i just be facing different racism there no i feel no. like i would. hello i'm from the pacific northwest 
So don't don't say Pacific Northwest to Bella or Maxwell because they huh? get ideas because they <laughs> they both no they both love the show Gravity Falls and it's set in the Pacific Northwest in a in a fake town called Gravity Falls, Oregon. So uh, Natasha gets the kids on her side by saying, yes, we should move to Portland, Oregon, in the Pacific Northwest. And then Maxwell gets all like, oh, we're moving to... No, we're not moving to Gravity Falls, guys. <laughs> but the Pacific the Northwest is pretty... They're pretty... It's a very tolerant region. I don't think yeah. you'll be... No. And, and it's full of Bigfoots. Yes, it is. They're yeah, and yeah, and they can outrun helicopters. Yeah, big feats. You d- you don't know that, do you? The they, big foot. They, big foot can outrun a helicopter. Yeah, I've heard. Oh, yeah. nice. Somebody nice. told me that once. Uh, I want to move to Phoenix because it would be weird moving to Phoenix. Jesus, train! You're really bringing the freaking podcast down. <laughs> <clears throat> I want to move to Phoenix, not because uh, my parents are there, but because I would suddenly have one million friends. Yeah. Because all the people that I went to school with and all the people I went to high school with, they're all still in Phoenix and we're good friends on Facebook and we talk all the time. So if I move to Phoenix, then suddenly I would be like popular again. And that's weird to me. Uh-huh. <clears throat> but that would be fun. And I like Phoenix. The only problem with that is that no one else wants to. And it, all they think is, oh, so it's going to be 300 degrees and we're going to melt. Great. Yeah. Maxwell just died. <laughs> Way to go, Steve. <laughs> Bella, interesting tidbit here. Bella says that she wants to move to Colorado. Where in Colorado? She specifically said, I want to move to wherever Bunny and Jeannie are, Colorado. <laughs> Aww. Aww. She loves you guys. It's really expensive here, though. Yeah. it's re- the- that's Aye. There's a part of me that's like, here's an idea. Um, let's not move. Like, I hate Shawnee. Yeah. And I, I hate Oklahoma. But it's cheap as fuck yeah. to live here. It's not Every- cheap to live here. Oh. Yeah, just everything is so cheap, and it's just so great. So, it's I like I'm fourteen minutes just from the fucking store. My pizza's gonna be cold before it gets here. I thought for sure the pizza was coming because I saw some guy drive uh, on down the other street. Stop it, Trey! And I'm recording the podcast. I saw a car drive by on the other street, and it, it had one of those glowing things on top of the car, and I'm like, oh, that's that's our pizza, but no. Wrong. <clears throat> uh, how long is that train? I don't know. And it's why? not that it's a long... It's not that it's a long train, it's that it's a small city. <laughs> oh. This train is literally passing through every inch of this freaking city, because we're small as hell. So... Natasha wants us to to book acid and leave. The thing that I'm worrying about, right, about this whole moving thing is, I have a real sweet deal right now at work. I'm the receiving manager and I'm the yeah. storyteller. And as far as I know, I'm the only person in the whole company who has this weird deal s- set up. So I'm a unicorn. Mm-hmm. So I'm worried, and I think I'm legitimately worried. Uh. That first off, receiving, uh, transferring to a different store, the transferring itself is very easy, but it would be extremely difficult to get another receiving manager job, not to mention each store gets a different amount of stuff in, different amount of boxes, and my store gets a lot, sure, but we're a much smaller store, so the amount that I get in my receiving area is less than other stores. What if I transfer to the nearest store in I don't know Portland, Oregon, and next thing this is like a two-story store, and I'm getting like 500 boxes a day. Like it, the, there's different levels of the amount that of work. Uh huh. You know? So so that's that's a, a a big question mark right there. Number one, and then you know it would be difficult to find a store to transfer to. It, then finding a store to transfer to that would want me to be both the receiving manager and the storyteller, I think right. that would be next to impossible. And I love my story times and I don't want to give that up. 
So I've been trying to slowly but surely extend Tasha's two-year number. I've been trying to extend it to maybe two and a half years, maybe three years, because I want to make sure the kids, you know, the what are we going to do? Like, you're out of high school. Bye. Yeah. It's your problem now, trying to figure out college. Have fun. Hope you don't get in trouble, because we won't be here. Laters. Lates. <laughs> so... You know, so we can be here for the girls while they're going to college, yeah, in state and all that. Uh, okay, let me put the podcast on pause for a second because the pizza guy, the pizza uh, person, got here. I oh, think it's okay. a girl. Usually a girl. All right, hold up. All right. Uh, so I'm sitting down. Okay. Okay. So we are back. We are back. Well, well, bunny. Yes. Well, bunny. Things have gotten a bit easier in the world of transferring. Okay, good. Uh, easier, not better. Ah, uh. it's, a, it's a, that's that's an important distinction. It's just easier because my company has just gotten rid of the position of receiving manager. Oh, okay. Now, I still have my job. I am still the receiving manager. But I will now, unless the company decides in a year or two or three or five that they made a huge mistake and bring it back, I will be the store's last receiving manager. Okay. You, so if you, I, are, you are a double unicorn. Yeah. So if I leave, that store doesn't get to hire another receiving manager unless uh yeah unless a it becomes a, a 10 million dollar store huh. so like a like a like a new york city company uh-huh a new york city store will be able to hire a receiving manager but not Shawnee, my store oklahoma yeah not not norman oklahoma they don't get a receiving manager. Yeah. It's the same thing that they did uh, with what we used to call lead booksellers because we would have a lead bookseller mm -hmm. and it was it, it was above a bookseller but below a manager. So you were kind of like the, the lead bookseller. You were in charge of this department. And so there were a bunch of different leads out there. And okay, you're in charge of our bargain department. You are in charge of our magazine department. You are in charge of fiction. You are in charge of cookbooks and how to stuff and so the company said we're getting rid of all of these lead bookseller positions you can still have your position but once you leave that position you will not be hiring another person to go into your position so most of these lead bookseller jobs are gone every once in a while you will see some random unicorn out there where it's like yes i am in charge of magazines <laughs> Uh -huh. But most of those are gone, and that was the company's way of, I don't know, saving money. Uh, so they've decided to do that with the position of receiving manager. So uh, if I leave, our, my store doesn't get a receiving manager position. My position would be filled by a number of uh, part-time employees uh -huh. and uh, some managers. So the corporation that I gave 17 years of my life to decided that uh, they didn't need me in this position anymore. I am still a receiving manager. Uh-huh. I still have my job. It, it's sad and frustrating and a bunch of other stuff. And the worst part of it is, is that I'm now between a rock and a hard place in that my wife is just going, oh, it, it, you know, two years, can't wait for us to move. Can't wait for us to move out of here in two years. Going to be so happy to move. And then I go to work, and literally, my manager said, "My manager said to me, Steve, I just want you to know that I own your soul for the rest of eternity." <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay, great. It's like, yeah, Steve, I just want you to know that we value your work as the receiving manager so much so that you now have the greatest job security of anyone in the store because we will never get rid of you. You will be with us until the day you die, Steve. Mm -hmm. 
It's like, yay, this is perfect. I love being in this uncomfortable position. How, how, how could they even make that call with how fucked up receiving is in all of the other stores? I don't know. Uh, some of the other receiving managers, so many of them are just like angry and pissed off and infuriated. And I can't believe that they would do this. And I am hurt and pissed off. I am none of those things. Yeah. Uh, it, the only thing that I am right now is uncomfortable because I'm in a really weird position because my wife wants to move. But mm -hmm. my job is saying you can never leave. Yeah. You know, and if I do leave, I can still transfer. It's just the transferring is easier in the sense that if I transfer to another store, I will uh, more than likely begin at the bottom of the totem pole. Yeah. After fucking you know? 17 years. Yeah. Yeah. After 17 years, if I transfer to another store, I'm going to be working 25 hours a week, probably behind a register. Mm hmm. I definitely can't get another receiving position anymore because that doesn't exist. That is so. Yay. So yay! <laughs> I don't have a, I don't have a nice wrap up to this story because it, it's not a story. It's just my life right now. So hooray! One good thing. One good thing. It, my manager has really been laying it on thick. But one thing she did say is, "Hey." If we suddenly become a massive $10 million store, then we do get to keep Steve. Hey, Steve, you're worth $10 million. Nice. And I'm like, thank you. That's a nice way to put it. You know? <laughs> That's nice. Yes, I appreciate it. That. Yeah. So anyway, uh, that, that's my big news. It sucks. Yes, it does. You know, and, and so does and so does moving. I mean, it's it's it seems like it's just a toss up over which one of you gets to have friends. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Which is kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah. But but yeah, that that that's that's me and work right now. It sucks. Shit. That totally yeah. sucks. Yeah. I mean, I mean, can't don't you pull some weight? I mean, you you are like the best storyteller, and your receiving your receiving department is top notch. You know, you just had yep. the executives. Yep. You know. Yep. But there's no. You know, I mean, with like, all that shit, at least you should have gotten a fucking raise. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. But, but it, you know, it's gotten to the point where, where in, instead of saying, I can't wait to move, Natasha will say, Natasha's now saying, look, we'll figure something out. We always do. Okay. So it's like, that, that makes me feel slightly a little bit, maybe possibly better. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, but you, you've still been doing the job for 17 years, you know, to, to try to start over again, where, how, you know, yeah. where do you go from Barnes and Noble? Yeah. I don't know. I do not know. But I got to I got to stay in this job for at least 3 more years cuz then I get a really nice uh I get a really nice uh sculpture. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's like a Tiffany glass sculpture with my name on it in recognition of my 20 years and it's uh sculpted to the shape of a book. Oh. It's it's an award. And I've got three years left to get it. And so that's that's now what I'm shooting for. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a worthy goal, I would have to yeah. say. I think it is too. Anyway, that is it 
for a very emotional note from the bookstore. And remember, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases. And all you have to do is, really simple, just get Donald Trump to say something bad about himself. <laughs> That's all you have to do. Yeah. Say that something is, bad about myself. Okay. It's really bad how amazingly talented and smart I am. Okay, you don't understand this. I don't think you get it. Oh, okay. Here's something bad about myself. I'm too hard of a worker. I'm always working so, <laughs> so very hard. And I'm like, okay, you, you don't understand. You just need to say a criticism. Okay, I don't know what that word means. <laughs> what criticism? It's not something Spanish, is it? <laughs> so cut on that bit. Cut on cut that. on cut on notes from the bookstore. That was exciting. That was it was nice to get that off my chest. That's that's I just don't really have anything to say there. Yeah, yeah. No, there's there's nothing to say. She'll have friends I mean, there. You'll have friends in in Arizona. You're gonna but, have to move to a place where you ha where not neither one of you have friends. Yeah, that's basically where we are right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like if we if we stay here, I still get you know my two positions, and I get you know the money. I'm making good money here. Yeah. And it, it's a really great position. It's just that my whole family wants to move. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we can move if you want me to lose everything work-wise. Yeah. So it's just, it sucks either way, but we'll figure it out. 